Tendons are amazing structures. They are fibrous connective tissue that attach muscle to bones. They absorb and transmit force that are required for day-to-day -day activities. Hey everyone, Zach Kumate here at Performance Sport and Spine, and today in this video we're going to discuss all things tendons. We'll go over tendonitis or tendinopathy, a more appropriate term. We'll discuss why you never want to completely rest a tendon. We'll go over the continuum model and why we think it best explains this complex condition. And then lastly, we'll talk about evidence-based exercises and load management strategies. So tendonitis is a term that we've all heard, which basically means that the inflammation is driving the pain and problems with your tendon. However, there's two main problems with this. First off, with tendons, the inflammatory markers are typically only raised by one and a half to two times compared to systemic infections that can be a thousand times or more. And secondly, the names and labels we use for diagnosis are very powerful and inflammation makes people not want to load or use a tendon, which is the last thing you want to do. So tendinopathy is a term that seems to be more appropriate. And tendinopathy is a broad spectrum definition that basically means that there's tendon pain, reduced function, and decrease in exercise tolerance. Basically where the capacity of the tendon can't handle the load that you're placing on it and it's variable to each person. Tendinopathies most commonly affect the upper and lower extremity, most notably the rotator cuff tendon, the forearm flexor and extensor tendon, the gluteal tendon, the patella tendon, and the Achilles tendon. Diagnosis is mostly clinical based on history, tenderness with palpation, and then pain-related loading. Routine imaging is not recommended and often doesn't change management or rehabilitation strategies. So now we're going to talk about why you don't ever want to completely rest the tendon. And this is probably the most important part of this whole video. So if we look at this graph here, we can see schematically that this person's capacity is greater than their load, where capacity is the body's ability to handle stress, and load is both internal and external stress placed upon the body. So as you can see, this person has a margin of safety or a buffer. But what happens is you get tendon issues and there's pain. So the intuitive thing is to rest it for a while, maybe several weeks, and the pain does go down. But the problem is the capacity also goes down. So if you look at the second part of the graph, you can see now that if we return to the same activity prior to the injury, our load is now above our capacity of our tendon. So now we set ourselves up for an increased likelihood of injury. So with tendon issues, it's important to sometimes temporarily reduce the provocative activity, or maybe just substitute something such as taking running and then doing cycling instead for a little while. Now this is assuming that it hasn't been major trauma and the integrity of the tendon is still intact. And now we're gonna talk about the continuum model by Jill Cook as we think it best explains this complex condition. But kind of simplistically, it talks about basically there's like an acute overload initially of a tendon where it can be red and inflamed and kind of swell a little bit. And often all it's needed is just to reduce activity a little bit and allow that tendon some time to recover and adapt. And it's important to know that there's no structural changes at this time. However, if this happens long enough, or there's a cyclical loading and unloading, over time, the tendon can start to have degeneration. Secondly, about 30 to 50% of tendons that have degeneration don't have any clinical symptoms such as pain or stiffness. So you might have heard the term treat the donut, not the hole. And basically what it means is that the donut part is the part that you treat. You get the donut stronger and it compensates for the inside or the hole part. So now we'll talk about exercises and load management strategies. So currently the best evidence says that exercise is the best choice that we have for managing tendinopathy. Now there may be adjunct treatments such as PRP and injections, but those should only be used with exercise. And it's very important that this is a patient-centered approach as each person is different and each tendon is different. So there's no perfect protocol and it has to be tailored to the person. So there's four components to kind of optimizing your load management strategies. Initially, most often you have to temporarily reduce or substitute the activity that's causing the tendon pain to allow it to have some time to calm down and heal. So the second component is resistance training. We gotta increase the capacity of that tendon. Now tendons are always gonna handle slow loads better than fast loads. So it may be advantageous initially to do isometrics, which is where there's contraction, but the limb is not moving. And then progressing to exercises where your limbs are moving. Another important thing is for a long time, eccentrics were kind of the gold standard for tendinopathies and tendon issues, but recent research has shown that heavy slow resistance training, so going slow up three seconds and three seconds down, is just as effective or more effective than eccentrics, so we don't only need to do eccentrics for tendon issues. Also, with tendon rehab, you're gonna have some discomfort. It's the name of the game, and that can make people fearful that they're gonna cause more damage. So a good way to kind of monitor this is the pain monitoring model, where if pain during the tendon rehab is okay, it can be up to a three or a four out of 10, depending on the person, but it should always calm down within 24 hours and you need to make sure that the symptoms are gone before you load the tendon again. And lastly, this is gonna take months. It takes a long time to get the tendon stronger, so it takes small incremental progressions over time and there is no quick fix. The third component is port specificity. What this means is we have to rehab the tendon for the demands that's gonna be placed on it. So if you're rehabbing a patella tendon for a basketball player, your rehab better start adding ballistic jumping towards the end of the program because we need to prepare that tendon for the demands that's gonna be placed upon it. 
So when rehabbing a tendon, it's more than just the tendon area, like say the patella tendon or the Achilles tendon. We do want to increase the mechanical properties of the tendon, but we also have to strengthen the muscle, improve the kinetic chain overall strength, and affect the mortal cortex. So again, think of this as more of a whole body rehab than just focusing on one specific area. And the fourth component is return to sport. So making sure the whole athlete is, re is ready for both the endurance and the physical loads of the sport. And some specific instances, there'll be different clearance tests that the person should clear before returning to the sport. So in summary, we need to move past the term tendonitis as inflammation is not the main driver and tendinopathy is a more appropriate term. Clinical exam is all we need to diagnose this, so we don't want to do routine imaging. And we want to make sure we don't rest the tendon too much. So we want to find that appropriate load to keep the capacity as strong as possible and then add resistance training and gradual small increases and know that pain is going to be there and some discomfort's normal and that we want to make sure we prepare the tendon for the load that's going to place on it and it's different for each person and each condition. Thank you so much for watching our video on tendinopathy. We hope this provides some clarity on this complex condition. And as always, if you have any specific questions, feel free to comment or send us an email with them.